Welcome to Daily Bible Study for Super Newbies. Today is January 17th, and today we are talking about Genesis 27, verses 1 through 40 on pages 50 to 53 of your Life Application Study Bible, NIV. Now, over the last few days, we have been learning about the descendants of Abraham and the beginning of the nations that God was promising to Abraham's descendants. Isaac, the son, the chosen son of Abraham and Sarah, had twins with Rebekah, his wife. Now we get into the gnarly gnarly because the sons were Jacob and Esau. Now Esau was impulsive. He sold his birthright, meaning his rightful inheritance, and his rightful blessing of God to his brother for a bowl of soup. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. A bowl of soup. He gave up his birthright for a bowl of soup because he didn't take it seriously. Now, back then, a birthright, you know, the inheritance of the family fortune, the family, you know, the crest or whatever, wasn't official until the father, you know, the father made it official with a blessing. So... You know, he could have decided to to give the inheritance to his other son, but it's not official until the father gives the blessing to the son, you know, kind of like passing the torch. Well, back then, we uh, we know that a person's word is their honor. It's binding. It is irrevocable. So here we go. Isaac was very, very old. Some years had gone by and we had learned that Esau was impulsive. He was the hunter. He was the one who went out and got food for the family, right? The the meat. Jacob was the one who took care of the homestead. He spent most of his time at home. That's where he loved to be. Isaac was about to die and he told Esau, you know, on his deathbed, he probably wanted a last meal before giving the blessing and passing the torch, told him to go out and get some game and bring him a last meal. He wanted him to make tasty food is what the scripture says before he gave his blessing. So Esau left right away, left to go hunt the game. He's probably thinking to himself, okay, this is it. I'm about to inherit, you know, the family, the the family riches, the family jewels, because they were well to do back then. He, um, Isaac and Rebecca, they had a lot of money. They were successful where they lived. So Esau went out, did what he was told. But what Isaac didn't know is that Rebecca was listening. And she heard Isaac tell Esau to go get him some food and make him a tasty meal for him to eat before he gave his blessing. So Rebecca quickly went and she told Jacob. Now remember, Jacob was sneaky. Jacob was deceptive. He got ahead by being deceptive, by being cunning, by being smart. She told Jacob to pretend to be Esau and to to give, you know, father the tasty meal that he was asking for so that he would receive the blessing in Esau's place. What that would do, what that would be to give Jacob, officially give Jacob the inheritance of the family, the inheritance of all the riches and all of the servants, basically putting it in stone that Jacob was the son who would, you know, would inherit the promised, you know, the promised land and the riches and that the descendants of Esau would then become his servants and his army. Right. Okay. So he did just this, but first he was like, Hey mom, Esau's got, you know, he's a hairy dude. I'm not going to fool dad because by, by now, you know, Isaac, you know, Isaac's vision was bad. He couldn't see. So he was worried that his father was going to know it wasn't Esau, wasn't the older brother. So what Rebecca did was she put, uh, she put Esau's best clothes on him on Jacob. So uh, they would smell like Jacob. It would smell like the field or the animals. And then she covered his skin and the smooth skin on his neck with uh, with uh, wolf skin. Or with, what was it, wolf skin or sheep skin? I don't remember. It was one of those, but animal hair of some kind. She put animal hair on the smooth part, you know, parts of his skin so that if I, Isaac touched him, he would think it was his other son. Jacob deceived his father, Isaac. Jacob deceived him. Now, Isaac initially thought that the voice of the person answering was of Jacob, but the smell and the touch was like Jacob. 
So he was fooled. Initially, he was kind of like, nah. But his other senses told him that it was his son Esau. Father blessed him. He ate the meal that Jacob and Rebekah deceptively prepared to fool Isaac into giving Jacob his blessing. And Jacob got his blessing uh, with the family birthright. And this blessing made it binding and official, irrevocable, that Jacob received the inheritance, not his brother. Now, right after that happened, Jacob left because he knew his brother was coming back. And the brother came back with, with the meal that you know his father had asked for, waiting for his blessing. So he says, the, he says, who is this that's bringing me this food? He's like, it's I, it's your firstborn son. And Isaac was shaken. He was like, well, then who was it that just brought me the meal? And he's like, oh, no. Jacob took my birthright blessing. You know, the father said, then it was Jacob that was here. And I had already given him the blessing. He couldn't take it back. Because remember, back then, the blessing was binding. It was official. And so Esau was like, well, don't you have a blessing for me? You don't have only one blessing, right, Father? I mean, you got one for me. Bless me too. But the Father said, I have already made your brother Lord over you. I have, I have already given him everything, all the assets, the inheritance. I gave it to him. I promised it to him. Can't take it back. He says, you, Esau, are going to be poor and live by the sword. But one day you'll get fed up and you will remove your brother's yoke from you. So what does that mean? It means that all of the family money went to Jacob. All of the servants went to Jacob. Said that, that Esau was gonna live by the sword. So his whole life, he was going to be a fighter. He was going to be a warrior. He was gonna have to fight for everything. He was looking at some tough times. But one day the father said, he Esau was gonna get sick of it and he was gonna break free of his brother's control. Because back in those times, being impatient and taking matters into your own hands always cause trouble. Always. Lesson for today. Always cause trouble. Cain and Abel. Cain didn't want to go to the trouble of figuring out what went wrong with his offering. So instead, he tried to eliminate the competition and killed his brother. Boom. Caused trouble. Abraham and Sarah, you know, they got impatient for God to give them the son so they could begin this historic journey of theirs about creating father of many nations. Had the, you know, Sarah told Jacob, I mean, told Abraham to have the son with his slave. And that wound up causing a lot of problems. And with Rebecca and Jacob in today's study, they got impatient for Jacob to inherit the family, the family riches, the family legacy. And they were sneaky and deceptive about it. And it caused a lot of problems. So trusting in God that he makes things happen when they're supposed to happen. It is very, very easy to get impatient. It is very, very easy to want God to hurry up. But during the delay and during the times we're made to be uncomfortable and to have troubles while we wait, there are things happening, one, that we don't know about, and two, to create us into the people that we're meant to be when those blessings occur. And we often get trapped in sin, trying to do things according to our own will, instead of trusting in God that he will make these things happen when they're supposed to occur. So what happened? Because, you know, Jacob didn't wait. What happened? Well, he wound up causing his brother to hate him. He wound up causing his brother a lifetime of struggle and hardship. And he wound up causing his brother to want to kill him. So tomorrow we're going to find out exactly what happens. <laughs> and with that, brothers and sisters, the lesson of today is to be patient. <clears throat> that things happen when they're supposed to. And with that, I love you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loves you. Have a wonderful day, brothers and sisters. I will see you all tomorrow.